Okay, so picking up where we left off yesterday, um, we were looking at a second order differential equation, non-homogeneous, so we had it equal to f of x, and we got to a point where we were going to search for a particular solution that was in this form, the parameter u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. And we are in search of this u1 and u2. Uh, once I have those, since we already know y1 and y2, then I can construct the general solution, which would just be the complementary function plus the particular solution here. So, All right, so we're going to go ahead and take the particular solution, and we're going to plug it into the differential equation. So we're going to compute the derivatives here. So first order derivative using product rule will be u1 prime, sorry, u1 prime y1 plus u1 y1 prime. And now for the second term we get u2 prime y2 plus u2 y2 prime. What I'm going to do is group, uh, shuffle around some terms, so to speak. I'm going to put the two terms with the y1 prime and the y2 primes at the front. So we have u1 y1 prime plus u2 y2 prime. And then the other terms, <coughs> u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2, I'm going to put at the end. Okay, and we're going to ignore these. Well, not really. It's actually kind of important that we define this assumption very clearly. We're going to set this equal to zero. So what we're going to do is work this uh, particular solution, and we're going to try to find u1 and y2, I'm sorry, u1 and u2, with the condition that when you do u1, y1, I'm sorry, when you do u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 that it actually combines to equal zero. Okay, so that's going to be our first condition. One of the reasons we want to do that is it's going to make the simplification uh, down the road a whole lot easier and a little cleaner. Okay, and we need, and I mean we can make this condition whatever we want, this is going to be the easiest one to work with. Okay, so this is going to equal zero. We're going to work with just this for our particular per, uh, solution when you do the first order derivative. So now if we do second order derivative, using product rule again, you get u1 prime y1 prime plus u1 y1 double prime plus u2 prime y2 prime plus u2 y2 double prime. Okay, now what we're going to do is go ahead and plug in y prime and y double prime, the particular solutions uh, derivatives into the original differential equation up here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug that in and take a look at what happens. So when I calculate y sub p double prime plus p y sub p prime plus q y sub p. This is going to be, and I'm just literally going to copy y sub p double prime. That's this term. Now I'm going to take p times the first order derivative of y sub p. So just these two terms times p. That's going to be p u1 y1 prime plus p u2 y2 prime plus, and now I'm going to take q times the particular solution. So q, and then again our particular was up here. So u1, y1, plus q, u2, y2. Okay, and what I'll do now is group some terms together to get some 
stuff to cancel out, if I factor out u1 from the terms that have a u1 in common, so that's this term, that term, and this term, you get y1 double prime plus p y1 prime plus q y1. I'll do the same with the terms that have a u2 in common. So that's this term, that term, and that term. That gives me y2 double prime plus p y2 prime plus q y2. And now the other two terms that are left are u1 y1 prime plus u2 prime oh, forgot a prime, u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime. Okay, And this should all equal f of x since that's what this equation equaled at the original or that was the original equation, sorry. So now, this and this equals zero. If you're not sure why, go back to the beginning, look at the format for the solution. Okay, we got y double prime plus py prime plus qy remember that y1 and y2 are independent solutions of the homogeneous equation which means that this was what would get the differential equation to equal zero instead of f of x so anytime you plugged in y1 the differential equation becomes zero anytime you plug in y2 the differential equation becomes zero and this is exactly what this looks like this looks like we plugged in y1 into the left hand side of the equation so that's going to equal zero and this looks like we plugged in y2, so that's going to equal 0. So then that leaves us with this. So we got two very important conditions here that we're going to look at. One, back here, this calculation here was based on this assumption, so let's write that down again. And what I'm going to do is put y1 in front and I'll explain why in a second. And I'll do the same, put y2 in front. So this was our first condition. And now we arrived at this, which says that u, I'm sorry, y1 prime u1 prime plus y2 prime u2 prime equals f of x. Okay, so this is a two by two system. Two unknowns, two equations. It may look like we have more unknowns, but remember, we know y1 because that was found earlier as our complementary, or as part of our complementary function. We know y2. And certainly we could compute the derivatives of y1 and y2. So the only things that we don't know are u1 prime and u2 prime. Oh, caught a mistake. This should not be u2 squared. My bad. That should be u2 prime. I'm sure you guys caught that. That is one very, very large prime. Okay, so u2 prime, and this is also u2 prime right here. <clears throat> Alright, so if we treat this as a system of equations, kind of like ax plus by equals some constant and then dx plus ey equals some other constant, we're going to solve with Kramer's rule. We could do substitution, elimination, and a bunch, you know, some other methods, but Kramer's rule will be helpful. It'll be one quick way of doing this. And if you forgot Kramer's rule, we'll just quickly go through it here. Okay, so if I wanted to find our quote-unquote x here, which is really u1 prime, we do two determinants. 